guys. Uh, this is our garbage blog number one. Uh, it might be our last garbage blog as well. I don't know. We're going to try something new right now. Uh, our editors are all tied up working on Epic History X-Men Volume 2. So in an effort to get you guys out some content, here we are. We're going to be doing this. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try it. This is our Game of Thrones mid-season garbage blog where I'm gonna to talk to you about what's been going on in this season, my thoughts and feelings, and some changes that have been going on, uh, lots of stuff like that. Um, so far in this season, I feel like I, I like this season better than I like last season. I feel like last season they were like putting, putting some extra stuff in there to make the show more interesting because the books that they're working on like right now, book four and book five, uh, aren't, it's like after the war, so it's not as exciting. So uh, last season, you know, they were putting some extra stuff in there that I felt like was a little too over the top, like they were getting a little too, too crazy with it. And this season, I haven't seen them do that as much. Like, I feel like they've learned a little bit of restraint, a little bit of intelligent restraint from last season, which is good to see. Um, I've enjoyed, you know, so far, I mean, I've enjoyed it. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, it's not like the first season, you know, but like, it's, it's fine. Like, I'm not super pissed off. In fact, I want them to go away from the books as much as possible because I don't want to know what's going to happen in the books. You know, a lot of people have been talking to me about like, oh, they're, you know, they're catching up. And do you think that they're going to spoil the books? And like, honestly, I don't think they're going to spoil the books. Like, I think that, yeah, they know what George R. R. Martin wants to do, but that doesn't mean that they're going to do what he's going to do. In fact, it'd be more intelligent to do something completely different. So, yeah. So whatever. Um, but let's, let's see here. Let's talk about some of the things going on uh, that I like. Uh, I'm excited to see Jamie and Braun together again. Obviously, um, this does not happen in the books, like, at all. Like, Jamie's going to the Riverlands to put down some river lords. Braun it does indeed marry Lawless, and she has the baby, and he names the baby Tyrion after Tyrion. And it's like the best fuck you to King's Landing. It's really funny. Um, but I do, however, I do enjoy seeing these two characters, especially Braun. I mean, he, that, the man who plays Braun has just does, done such a great job with that character. He really makes you like that character a whole lot. You want to see more of him. Um, and that's another thing that I've noticed a lot this season is the fact that they're pairing people off and then sending them out together. That seems to be kind of like their plan this season. And so far, I feel like that plan's working out pretty well for them. Um, it was fun to see them fighting those dudes when they land in Dorne and then Jamie like puts his hand Because I was thinking that the whole time I was like put your hand up dude And then he did and he stopped the sword and that was like pretty fun. That was a, that was a fun little thing I enjoyed that a lot um, Also Illyria Sand is not the one who's like calling for vengeance, you know, it's Obara the the daughter in the book series um, So, you know instead of like in the books They sent this guy Balin Swan down there and then he gets messed up with the sand snakes and it's kind of like this this weird tale. So, you know, I'm not entirely sure what's going to go on with this, but, you know, I'm interested to find out. Uh, let's see here. Also, um, uh, now one storyline that I'm really like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what's going to happen, um, is the Sansa storyline. This is something that's gone in a completely new direction. And in fact, there is stuff from the books that they could have used, but they've just decided not to, um, for several reasons. And I understand some of those reasons. Um, but so, okay, obviously in the show, uh, Sansa is going to be married to Ramsay Bolton, um, but there has been some, you know, Littlefinger has said something about take your revenge, so I don't know what exactly what they're planning. Uh, who knows if they're going to try to kill the Boltons and have their own red wedding. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Um, and it does seem a little odd that Littlefinger would play Sansa with, like, these fucking people, because, like, they're fucking murderous crazy people, but whatever. Uh, hopefully, I guess this is her test out of the frying pan into the fire. She gets to see if she can kind of survive Ramsay. Uh, in the books, it's really interesting. Um, the Boltons do marry a Stark in the books, but it's Arya Stark, but it's not really Arya Stark. It's Jane Poole, who used to be Sansa's handmaiden, who was captured in King's Landing when everything went down uh, in the first book series where everyone got captured and stuff. And so they pass her off as Arya because she grew up at the castle, you know, she knows everything about it. Like, she, she has the northern look about her, you know, they could pass her off, it's fine. Um, and her story is, like, really sad. Like, it's really disturbing what happens to her um, with Ramsay. Obviously, Ramsay's, like, a fucked up dude, so, you know, things don't, aren't going great for fucking Jane Poole. So, we'll see how things happen with Sansa. I don't know, <laughs> it'll be really interesting. Um, let's see here. Who else? Who else? All right. So we got Daenerys in Marine. 
Uh, just like in the books, you know, ruling ain't easy. It's been really difficult for her to figure out what's going on. This, is, this wasn't my favorite part of her story in the book series, and it's not my favorite part of her story uh, in the, the show, obviously, because it's just, it's not fun. Like, it's fun to see someone, like, conquer and leave. It's not fun to see someone have to deal with, like, fucking shenanigans and politics and stuff like that. But, um... But it will be interesting to see kind of what happens, uh, especially with the fighting pits. Now that she's finally agreed to the fighting pits being reopened, I'm sure we'll see that this season. And there's uh, a really cool scene in the books from the fighting pits that I'm looking forward to seeing uh, here. And also uh, with Tyrion, there's been a lot of different changes going on with his story. Uh, he never came over with Varys, although I do enjoy them together. They're a great odd couple. I really like their interactions. Those two have a lot of, uh, a lot of chemistry on screen. But um, in the books, Tyrion does indeed... Even though he's not with Varys, he's with some other dudes, he does get captured by Jorah, and Jorah is, his plan is to take him to Daenerys. Um, and obviously along the way, terrible things happen. But in the book series, Jorah is not the one who gets grayscale. It is another dude, but they, you know, it's just too many characters, I understand, they can't have all these fucking people in here. So Jorah's the one who got it. I, I realized it halfway through the episode, I was like, oh, I know what they're gonna do and it was it's so it, oh fuck it's like a death sentence it's like so sad like it's super sad to see Jorah I mean it, it's it's good like it's good writing I get it I get what they're doing it's so sad um so we'll see what happens with that we'll see what happens with him um let me see I wrote a list of things going on here let's see what what else oh it was actually I really enjoyed seeing Valeria um, that's some place that we've never seen in the books because literally in the books, like you don't go within a hundred miles of the place because you will vanish and no one will ever see you again. Like it's just how it is. Um, Valeria is kind of like an ancient Egyptian type society to them, like where they had all these amazing things and knowledge that have been lost to time and they don't know how they did what they did, but there was this great doom that came upon Valeria and, and it's a smoking ruin and you can't go near it and all this stuff. So, but it was fun to see it, like, to see them go through it. Um, but in the books, it was like Volantis where the stone men were. It wasn't Valyria. Um, but, you know, I, I was excited to see that. Um, oh, yeah, another thing. Okay, and this is another one. Is in the books, Tommen is, like, nine years old. Okay, so obviously in the show, all the kids are growing up, like, really fast. So they just have to roll with that. So obviously Tommen is not nine years old uh, in the show. So him and Marjorie are doing it, but in the books, they're not doing it. But yeah, but essentially uh, the Loras situation is really interesting because that didn't happen in the books either. Like, in, in fact, Loras, who's still really upset that um, his dude, his boyfriend died, and that Stannis, the shadow Stannis fucking killed his dude, that he goes to Dragonstone to help lay siege to Dragonstone so they will take uh, Stannis' last holdings in the south and uh, while he is trying to scale a wall to get into Dragonstone, someone dumps hot oil on him, and he is a crispy critter. He's still alive, but he is certainly not going to be beautiful anymore for the rest of his life. Like, it's over. We haven't actually seen him recovered yet. We just know that, like, that happened. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens with Loras and all the High Sparrow nonsense, you know. Uh, things weren't quite so crazy in the books. Like, they weren't, like, carving fucking shit in their heads and, like, eh, I, I mean, they're dicks. Like, don't get me wrong. The sparrows are fucking pain in the ass. Faith Militant super sucks. But um, it's it's a little, it seems a little crazier, a little, a little crazier in the fucking show. But whatever, it's fine. Um, also, oh, this is a big one for Daenerys. I totally forgot. Uh, Barristan Selmy is dead. I, that does, that has not happened in the books. He is not dead. In fact, he has his own POV chapters in the books. So, um, so fuck, man. I don't know. I don't know. Like, they're really setting Danny up to, like, have zero advisors. Because, like, Jorah's got grayscale. So even if he comes back, he's going to be dead. You know, he's dead man walking. Then you have Sir Barristan, who's dead. Grey Worm has been injured. Um, you know, Masande is just Masande. She's like, ah, this is not, I'm not a fucking advisor, dude. Like, I'm just a translator. Um... So, you know, it's like they've really picked off like Danny's crutches one by one. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how she handles herself now that she doesn't have a bunch of dudes with a lot of experience on her side anymore to kind of help her out. So, yeah. So that's it today for my mid-season Game of Thrones review. Uh, so far, so good. We'll see, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of 
I don't know. It's, it's fine. It's fine. We'll see where it goes. And also, don't forget to check out our Epic History X-Men Volume 1 for the price of one comic book. You can purchase our one-hour documentary all about uh, the X-Men, where they came from, what, what things were going on in our real, real world that helped to uh, inspire the, the idea of the X-Men, what was going on back then in the 60s to create such a, a crazy bunch of teenage mutants. So you can... So you can find that in the link below, in the description. Got a link in there. I'm done.